if I say the word energy, you'll probably think of something like this, our very first invention, making fire. In fact, it was probably the first source of energy that man ever used beyond muscle power. It's not a bad source of energy. It produces heat, light, and even a little bit of sound. But energy is not so valuable in terms of what it is, but rather what it can do for us. So, for example, I can use the energy of this fire to uh, cook my dinner, heat my home, light up the dark, or if I get really inventive, I can use the energy of this fire to help me fly. Hot air rises, and if a bag is light enough, the energy of the hot air will lift the bag upward. It was capturing the energy and fire that enabled the first humans to fly in 1783 in a hot air balloon. The energy of the fire was put to work lifting the balloon into the air. It's a technique that's still in use today. We just have fancier ways of carrying the fire. This is why energy is valuable to us. It has the ability to do work. Fire, or heat, is only one form of energy. Objects, fluids, and electricity can also have energy, or the ability to do work. Objects, when they're moving. Fluids moving, like the wind, or falling water, all have energy, and can all be turned into other forms of energy, such as electricity. You may not think of an object as having energy, but in some cases it can. Take, for example, stretchy materials, like the stretchiness of this bow. When I stretch it, it wants to return to its original shape. So it has the ability to do work. In a way, you can say that it has energy. The work that it does is the work of moving the arrow. But that energy is not released until the bow itself is released, so it can be stored into the future. Likewise, when it delivers this energy to the arrow, the arrow itself has energy because of its motion. This ability to do work in the future is an important thing to consider because it's a way of storing energy. The elastic properties of stretchy materials is called elastic energy. An object can also have the potential to do work simply by where it happens to be. If it happens to be in a very high place, the object can do work when it's allowed to fall. Since gravity is what makes things fall, and they have the ability to do work when they fall, this potential is appropriately called gravitational potential energy. An interesting thing about potential energy is that it doesn't matter if you raise a piece of steel or water. If they weigh the same and it raise the same height, they have the same potential energy. It's the potential energy of the falling water that is turned into electricity in a hydroelectric dam. Once potential energy is released, it becomes the energy of motion, kinetic energy. The kinetic energy from the motion of this river has done a rather destructive kind of work moving the buildings off their foundations. The motion of this train gives it the ability to do work, moving just about anything that gets in its way. Electricity is a more common form of energy because we put it to so many different kinds of work, from electric motors and light bulbs to televisions and computers. Electricity also has potential energy because we can store it in batteries where it has the potential to flow at some later time. In fact, voltage is often referred to as potential difference because it has the potential to move charge from an area of high voltage to an area of low voltage. These forms of energy, elastic energy, gravitational potential energy, kinetic energy, electrical energy, and heat energy are all valuable to us because they have the ability to do work. Looking at it another way, whenever work is done, energy is in use. The remarkable thing about energy is how easily it can be changed from one form to another. For example, solar energy from the sun does work raising water into the air. 
When water changes to water vapor and forms clouds, the drops gain potential energy as they rise to a greater height. If the drops end up in a lake which is higher than the lake they started in, they now have the potential to flow back down. As the water rolls down from the hills and rivers, it can be captured and stored behind the dam. Later, if it's released, the kinetic energy of the water is turned into the rotational energy of turbine blades spinning in a powerhouse. The rotating turbine turns a generator which changes kinetic energy into electrical energy. The electrical energy can then be used by a device to be put to useful work. In all of this, the total amount of energy that comes out in the end is the same as the amount of energy that was put in by the sun in the first place. This is probably the most important concept in energy, that it can be changed into many different forms, but it cannot be destroyed. That's a hard concept to swallow because there never seems to be as much energy coming out of a system as went into it. That's usually the job of a technician, to find out where the energy was lost. Sometimes it can be lost in ways that you might not think of. Can you see how it's being lost in these systems? If you're going to put energy to work, you need to know two things. First, how much work needs to be done. Second, how much work can the energy do? Well, we saw in our work unit that work is measured in units like foot-pounds, joules, and BTUs. But since energy is nothing more than the ability to do work, it's measured in the same units. So you have foot-pounds, joules, and BTUs. That makes it a lot easier for you. So in this unit, we're going to study different kinds of energy. For example, we're going to study elastic potential energy from materials that will return to their original shape when they're, st when they're stretched. Then we're going to look at gravitational potential energy, the ability to fall. Next, we're going to look at kinetic energy, the kind of energy that just about any object can have if it moves. And next we're going to look at electrical energy, which can come in handy sometimes. If you're close enough to a radio station. And we're going to look at thermal energy. And right now I'm going to put the thermal energy of this fire to work cooking my dinner. By the way, it was thermal energy in the form of heat loss that was being thrown away in these scenes. Thank you.